After our first adventure of screen printing out of our basement, we learned a lot of lessons. Welp, we've decided now to take on an even bigger task and go the direct to garment printing road. Now we're living in Georgia and Brad's got this big house with an empty garage to put all this equipment in. So we decide that it is time to try to make our product more successful. This is going to cost us about $50,000 to get all of this equipment up and running. So we take the plunge, we get everything set up, and we start printing away. Let's just say this. It did not come easy. Every problem that you could possibly encounter when taking on a new task happened to us. But without further ado, let's get into all of the lessons that we learned, all of the techniques for this printing, and see how we pick up the pieces from yet another huge business mistake. It's time to take a break from your day and let us build it in a positive way. This is Break and Build with Brad and Billy. You've been with us for a decade now. Wow. Not quite, 10 weeks. But we'll pretend it's a decade. <laughs> Every week is like a year of our life. Exactly. That's 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 close to how it's going. I mean, that's pretty close to how it's going right now. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, if you've been listening along this whole time and everything like that, go back to the beginning and start listening to our whole story. We jumped around a little bit. We just kind of talked about a bunch of Pokemon stuff, and then we went into choosing your career with Billy and kind of his path to mm -hmm. content creation. Now we're going to jump kind of back in line with our overall life story and where we left off. And we left off where we went through the launch tournament with uh, mm -hmm. doing our really first big clothing order and setting up shop and things like that. Uh, and where that kind of brought us over the next kind of year, year and a half time span was we have this amazing client. We now are excited to try to expand into new clients. and we're trying to figure out how we sustain a business and products to sell outside of one-off events because these one-off events are really good. They set us up for really good places um, with chunks of cash that mm -hmm. we can expand our business, things like that. So in this particular instance, we are going to be talking about DTG printing. And if you don't know what DTG printing is, it is direct to garment printing. In the past, we talked about screen printing, which is different. Um, there's several different types of printing. This one is another one that we decided to go hands-on with, which is basically a giant printer that you put a piece of paper in, right? So like if you put a piece of paper in your printer, it's got all the inks in it, and it does this whole back and forth, thing, like, right? And it's printing line by line by line of your what you would print on a piece of paper, whether it's an image or text or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Literally the exact same concept, except it prints ink on shirts or whatever you're going to print it on, right? So the crazy part about these printers is just like, it seems simple and it seems Their like price? a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to drop that. I was, I was going to drop that in a little bit. I was going to drop that in a little okay, bit. Okay, continue on. <laughs> I was going to say like, so you look at a printer, right? And you say, it can't be that difficult, right? We've done the screen printing stuff. That seems hard, right? The screen printing stuff seems hard. And so we go, it, how hard is it? You know, you watch a couple of videos and you go, how hard is it to put a shirt on this thing like you do in your screen printing. Oh, wow, it's even cooler. It's got these things that hold the shirt in it. Like you stuff the shirt in these like little rubber compartments and it holds the shirt nice and tight. Uh, and you're like, how hard can it be to just hit a button and hit go? Like that's all we're doing. Like we're loading an image in, we're hitting print. How hard, how hard can it be? This is the easiest thing of our life. We're literally just gonna put these things in there. So at this time I'm renting a house and we've got a full two car garage. We set up shelves in there. We purchased the printer. We purchased two heat presses and we purchased a printer to print tags on the inside of a shirt. So this is like our second shop that we're trying to set up. And we're like, oh my gosh, we're spending literally like thirty to forty thousand dollars 
total, potentially a little more with mm-hmm. all the inventory that we go. So let's just call it an even, we spend $50,000 because we did, we got shelves, we bought shirts, we bought all the supplies, we bought the DTG printer, two heat presses and the tag printer. Um, so somewhere in between that forty and $50,000 range is what our now investment is that we've saved up in our company. And we go, okay, it's time to invest back into our company. Let's do this because it is going to allow us to create products on a day-to-day basis. So this shop, we get it set up, man, and it's dope, right? Like it's dope. We're like, dude, we got a literal print shop in this garage. We're ready to rock and roll. Like I even finished the floor of the garage like I put, you know, nice like rubber coating on the floor of the garage, making it look all fancy. I'm like, I'm I'm ready. Let's let's start printing. Uh and with this, we make what probably a hundred to hundred and fifty designs probably. It was it was a Dude, we made a, so many designs. It was a the lot. one thing about the the DTG preserves that we liked, right? Because we started at the launch tournament. So now we're getting into like like Brad said, how do we sell stuff? So we're like Maybe if we can just have more designs in our shop, and since Smite is kind of going to advertise our shop on occasion, we can have this huge demand for all this product, right? And if we have a ton of different stuff is what we're thinking, and we can print off these one-off designs, then we'll be sitting pretty, right? So we're like, okay, we'll do all this stuff that Brad talks about. We've got everything set up. We've ordered all the shirts, and while ordering the shirts, we just ordered a bunch of like blank shirts mm-hmm. in different colors. And the reason why we wanted to do this in this manner is because we didn't want to have too much of a shirt that's like, you know, ordering one off for screen printing. So the good thing about screen printing is it's really quality. The downside is like you have to order a pretty good quantity, like 100 minimum usually of one design. And you can switch the colors of the shirts, but not the design colors. And we wanted to have more options for that since Smite's so creative. We're like, oh, yeah, we can do all this stuff and have all these clothes and so yeah, that's where we're at right now. And we're like, we're going to bang this out. We're going to have a ton yep. of stuff. We're going to have our, our shop look amazing. We're going to have so many different designs so that we think in our minds, the more designs, the better we're going to look, the more demand we're going to have. And so we completely oversaturate the market with like 150 <laughs> designs and we load them all in the printer. And we're like, yo, this is going to be sick. Yeah. And, and so we went over the process for like screen printing. So let's go over the process for this. I forgot. We actually had a spray machine as well because you have, to, you have to spray it. So first, what you have to do is you have to basically de-lint the shirt. You have to make sure there's nothing like on the shirt that you know is like lint or string or anything like that. You make sure there's no holes in the shirts because sometimes these shirts just have holes and you just got to throw them away. Mm-hmm. So we load this into this big, sp- it's literally like a spray booth. If you've ever seen a body shop of a car and like a big spray booth that you would paint a car in, it's like that. If you hit it with the honey, I shrunk the kid's gun and it shrinks down (laughs) that's like that's literally like what it is and it's like this like little compartment that a a, has a board that slides out and you wrap the shirt around in it and and it's a very similar process to um kind of the screen printing but what, what you would do is you'd put it in here and you'd load this this stuff it was literally kind of like a watered down Elmer's glue is the easiest way to describe mm. it. It's like a watered down Elmer's glue that is loaded into this machine and there's spray nozzles in the inside of it. And you hit the go button. And what it does is it moves this track of spray nozzles and it goes like, rah, rah, and it sprays the whole shirt with this like glue material. So now the spray is now the shirt is like soaking wet with this glue material. And so then you have to take it and then you have to put it onto a heat press and then you heat press this glue down. And basically what it does is it creates this film on top of the shirt. So now you have this like opaque white film on top of the shirt and it feels kind of starchy, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So now what that's doing is that's creating this nice and smooth surface for it to print on. Because if you try to just print on the shirt, it doesn't stick to anything and all the fibers of the shirt get in the way and stuff like that. So now cool, we got this shirt. Mind you, this stuff works perfect the first time you go to print something like it works Mm -hmm. flawlessly right like it's brand new out of the box it's the first time you use it it works really good there is some flaws that that we had to figure we had to figure out a lot of stuff but so now you put it into the printer and you wrap it in the printer you line it up the printers all we already did all of our like leveling and all our print tests and all these things to get it to this printing state so then you print it and it starts printing it and we're like 
oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever. Like this image looks exactly how it looks on the computer. Like the highest quality you could possibly imagine being printed on a shirt. Because we went for like the most expensive DTG, the best DTG printer out there. So like, we're like, this is amazing. So like we're staring at this thing and we're just like, oh my gosh, is this what we're going to be able to do? And we're the so st- endless. We're so stoked at this point. So, you know, knowing us, you know, I probably wanted to put the shirt on while it was wet because we've done that before. So, <laughs> <laughs> so notorious for not letting the process finish <laughs> and throwing the excited garment onto yeah. our bodies. <laughs> and and so then you you look at it and you're like, oh, like there's this weird film on it, right? So we that glue like is like a weird film and you can see this like rectangle on the shirt that's like discolored. And we're like, Ooh, that's not really good. That's not good quality. So we look into it more and we're like, okay, you got to wash the shirt. So when you wash the shirt, it basically dissolves that glue and the ink stays on there and you're good to go. And you're supposed to wash the shirt inside out. Um, you're supposed to wash it with like certain water temperatures and all these things. I didn't read any of that. I just throw <laughs> the shirt into the washer. I pull it out. And the ink is completely off the shirt. It's like a brand new shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, and then, that's and then not it, good. instantly when stuff like that happens, me and Brad look at each other like, oh my God, we just spent all this money and we have no <laughs> idea what we're doing. Like the second something goes wrong, that is like the panic button. Like, oh man. And and so the the reason that didn't work is because we didn't dry it. Once again, we didn't dry the shirt. We just had this in our mind of you don't need to dry ink. It's just as magic, right? So after you print it, you're supposed to put it back in the heat press for 30 seconds and you leave it in the heat press. The heat press basically dries all the ink, presses it onto the shirt, and then you can leave it sit for a little bit. Then you can wash it inside out. So we do that and we're like, okay, let's try another one. We try another one. We realize you have to dry it, put it in the heat press. We wash it again. And then we're like, oh man, like half the ink like comes off. Like it, it becomes this really like kind of worn and it's peeling off the shirt and we're just like okay what are we missing now like what is wrong why can't we get a good print to last through the washer and so we boil it down there's there's all these there's all this calibration and settings like if you think you have it calibrated to print good you basically don't because the amount of from the amount of glue that you put on the shirt to how long you heat press it to how much ink you know you're putting on the shirt and it's like one little tweak in the wrong direction basically allows that to happen. So like what we found is we were putting too much glue on the shirts. So there was too much of a barrier between the ink and the shirt. So when you wash it, that glue is supposed to go away and it was basically taking the entire image and all the ink with it. So it's like, Mm -hmm. now we have to dial the glue down and now we're sitting here doing all these test prints, dialing stuff down, seeing how it works. And it's just like test print after test print after test print. And then finally we get a shirt that is like a good consistent quality and working and stuff like that. And so what we found out later is it's really hard to maintain these machines. Really challenging. It's really challenging. So it's like once you calibrate it all and you get it to where you want it to be, these machines are meant to maybe print, I would say 10 to 20 shirts a day. Like, because, huh? No. How many? I talked to so I talked to Ryan oh, about yeah? these machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say? And I mentioned him about the whole story and he basically said that these machines are meant to run virtually 24/7 and the second they stop, oh. they can start doing what happens to the shirts eventually which we'll get to. But so these machines are literally meant to be okay. fluidly running all day and that's what keeps them the most consistent. The second they start stopping, um, they start having like hmm. issues, which we'll get into. And I also want to point out one other thing that, so we invested probably like maybe 10 grand of our own money. And then I've always been a little bit strategic about certain things. And since we didn't want to fork out all the rest of the money, I don't even think we had the money to do all the, the DTG printer. We split it on two, uh, yeah. no interest credit cards for, um, I think we had 24 months, no interest. So in our minds, we're like, okay, this is a loan, a free loan. We'll get this and then we'll be able to go ahead and use this printer and pay it off easily because if we're able to print as many shirts as we think in our minds we can print, then obviously we're going to make enough money to be able to easily pay off this this printer because it would be like a, a thousand bucks a month or so and we'll be able to just have it done with. 
And honestly, that is the smartest decision ever. If Mm -hmm. we did not, whenever, yeah, go ahead. If we did not put stuff on a credit card, we would have been so screwed in a little bit. Yeah. I think for, for myself, a big lesson, and I think that Brad's obviously seen this too, but like if you're going to do something, and I'll even extrapolate it to everyday life too. So let's say you have a contractor coming to your house and you maybe not be so sure about this contractor. If you pay somebody in cash, you have no more leverage once that person leaves your house, right? Mm-hmm. And so you don't have insurance that this person did a good job. And if they did, the only thing you can do is what? Call, tell them you're going to call the, the BBB if they say they're not coming back and, and can create a complaint, which is, you know, I don't know, throwing a stone at somebody that's riding their motorcycle away. <laughs> or you use a credit card. The wonderful thing about a credit card, and I don't want you guys to get like stuck in credit card debt because that's not the thing is that credit cards give you leverage because if they didn't do a good job, you guys can go to your credit card company and say, hey, I'm going to create a dispute on this card. The second you create a dispute, the dispute is then flagged. All the money is taken from the vendor and it's put into a holding account so that they can investigate. So that leverage right there, which we'll talk about in a little bit, Mm -hmm. is a insurance plan that if either you're not sure about a purchase or maybe it's a, a, a business decision or whatever it is, if we would have paid in cash for this or we would have paid in cash for some of our other decisions, maybe not have worked out so well in our adva- in, in our favor. And looking back on it, those credit cards and you that process that. right there where they're protecting their consumer's money is a lifesaver. Yeah, literally is. So, so yeah, so we're, we're set up and... As Billy said, so these are meant to run 24-7. So yeah, I still didn't even mm-hmm. know that. And yeah. what we're doing is we're printing like, okay, here's the 20 shirts that we have to print. We're printing a design. We're changing it. We're printing a design. We're changing it. And like we're going through, we're cleaning the machines every single day. We're doing this stuff. But then sometimes, you know, maybe they would sit for like three days unused. And we would mm-hmm. say, okay, we have this many shirts to print. Let's print them all in a day. Like... There were some right. days where we'd have enough orders to be printing every day consistently for a four to five hour period, maybe. And then there was other ones where it would be like, hey, we got two orders. Well, let's wait and stack these up for a couple days and then print everything in a day. Because having to get the machine ready, calibrate it, clean it all, like it's a whole process. So in mm-hmm. our minds, it was like doing that to print like one shirt is a lot of work and it's a lot of waste. Right. So and Brad's working full time. And I'm working part-time and going to school. And so the process why we were setting it up like this was because Brad would cure or he would put all the glue and dry the shirts, right? And then I would come over and I would print the shirts while Brad went to work. And then I would package them and I would ship them out. So it was like this whole thing. And let me mind you that Brad's now living an hour away from where I Mm. am in Atlanta. So each time, right? So we're trying to condense and be as most efficient as possible, try to stack up on some orders. You know, it's acceptable to go two to three days before you ship out an order. And then on that third day, we just go over there. I do all the work, I print them, and then I ship them out. If it's during the week. And then on the weekends, obviously, we have more flexibility. Yeah. So So we get that process pretty much just running. It's running pretty smooth. We've got shirts turning out good. We start to get a lot of just like smaller influencers and stuff like that to try to do shirts. We're like, hey, we could print shirts for all these people now and we can start to create stores online for Mm -hmm. all these other people and smaller companies and stuff. So like we create like, dude, we probably had 20 different stores of individuals or smaller companies that wanted clothing. And we were doing this whole design studio, like we're doing all their designs, all their shirts, all their clothing for them. So not only now did we have stuff for just, you know, like a bigger vendor, we had all these smaller vendors and people that we were developing relationships with and like allowing them to have merchandise, which they didn't have. And mind you, this is pretty much before any of those stores out there now where like Redbubble or like all those ones where you can just go upload designs and they put it on all your merchandise. None of those really existed. Really the Mm -hmm. the closest thing was like Custom Inc., And like that's still ordering quantities or ordering one-offs. Like it's not what it is now where you can put your own design on all these websites and stores. There was really nothing. The only one that I actually can think of because I love their website was Yeti. And Yeti, Mm. which is like Y-E-T-I-T-E-E or something. It's like Yeti with T in it, like t-shirt. And like that was the only one that I even knew existed back then. So now there's 
dozens of them, right? They're just, they pop mm-hmm. up all over the place because they all have these DTG printer, you know, warehouses and studios going on where they just have these machines constantly able to print stuff all the time. So that was our thought process was to start to create something like that for all these people. And we just started to find out that it was a lot harder and a lot more time consuming than we wanted it to be. So now we start getting frustrated because we're printing these shirts and some of them are just not coming out good. And some of them are just getting ruined. And we got this, I got this stack of shirts just like piling up one after another, after another. And like, it gets to like maybe 75, like misprints over the course of like a three week period, maybe four weeks max. So like, we don't even have this printer for a month yet. And I'm just like, dude, this is not, this is not good. Like we shouldn't have this much waste. Like this is way more waste than we should have. Um, I think the acceptable waste typically is, you know, way, way lower. It's like, I think you usually can say a 10% waste is like, okay, but that's like on the high Mm -hmm. end. And we were like way, way above that. We were like a 25% waste at this point. And so we're just like, we're just like, okay, why, why is this happening? I was on the phone with their tech support of this printer. I couldn't even tell you how many times at this point, at least two or three times a week. And we had emails going back and forth. I tried to make paper trails and just like really show here's all the problems that we've been having and then how are they being fixed? And at no point in any of these conversations did they say, oh, well, it's because your machine isn't running 24 seven. So it's causing more problems, Mm -hmm. right? Like there's never these conversations of how to actually fix it. It's oh, you have to clean this or you have to change this or you need more ink or you need less glue, whatever it is. It's like they're giving me a Band-Aid for a bigger issue, essentially, every single time. So, um, yeah, like, I don't know. We're just getting, we're just getting frustrated. And then uh, the, the, the thing that happened next was is they told us, oh, it's because it's probably too humid because we were doing this in the garage in Atlanta over the, <laughs> the summer. So we're like, okay we got to move this inside. I've got a big, like great room in this house that we're renting. So we're like, let's move it inside. Well, the most we moved this printer in the past was lifting it up onto a table. Now we're going to try to get this printer through a doorway. (laughs) This printer weighs, I don't know, 200, 250 pounds. Like it's a lot. This thing is huge. When we say printers guys, like, you might be thinking of a printer, but you got to think this thing, take like your printer, like a big printer that you guys have seen from your home and then like multiply it by 10. Yeah. It's like, right? like this thing is huge. It's like four it feet is, by three feet by yeah, two feet high, four something feet, like that. Four feet uh, to five feet wide, yeah. by like two to three to four feet high. Like it's a big it's machine. And it's got and it's these got nice handles though for us to hold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's, it's that wide, right? So a doorway is 36 inches. It's wider than a doorway. So like it's, it's, at, it's at least that wide. It's wider than 36 inches because we cannot fit it in a doorway. Mm-hmm. So we have to flip it on its side. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed to flip these on its side. Um, <laughs> you can like dislodge like the, the components of it and everything. So we're trying to flip this on its side without breaking it, without messing anything up to get it through the doorway. We finally get it through the doorway and get it inside and we start printing inside and we, we do start to have a little bit better results inside because it's more controlled climate and stuff like that. So we're like, okay, maybe that was the problem. We're up and running again. And now at this point, like the printer stops working, it's freezing in between prints and stuff like that. And we have to basically getting like streaks in the graphics. Yeah. Or like, the whole graphic, let's say it was like a blue and, and red and white print, there would be like just like a random streak missing mm. or it would be like a different color, It'd be like orange in there. So like now all types of weird stuff starts happening. And let us mind you, let, let's get this set up right. So Brad's in this house. Now his living room, which once had a couch wraparound facing a TV. <laughs> now the entire wall of where this humongous sofa was is a humongous DTG printer. <laughs> so if you're in his kitchen making food, you look into the living room and now you have this full on DTG machine. I think, Brad, did you exactly. make the tables or did you buy no, them? No, they're, like, they're like, like those awesome. big metal tables. They're like big yeah. metal tables. 
super awesome metal table. So now Brad has like a full on DTG production like equipment studio in his living room. <laughs> and also at this point, before we moved it, we actually had another helper. We had Anthony helping us. So Anthony was printing yeah. stuff for him and we actually had like our first okay. employee and he was outside and he was like, oh my gosh, it sucks working out here. And then when we told him we were moving it inside, he was like, yes, I get to work inside where I'm not dying all the time. So we we did actually experience it also experienced, you know, having an employee printing because we started getting so many orders with all of these things that we had lined up. Like we mm -hmm. physically could not keep up with us printing, you know, in nights and weekends and stuff like that. So like we had him there literally for like eight hours a day printing three days a week, probably mm -hmm. um, some, some weeks it was, it was almost five days a week. So like he was just grinding this stuff out and it, you know, anytime there was a problem, I'm trying to troubleshoot it while I'm at work running a broadcast, mm -hmm. like on the phone with him, like you got to clean it this way. You got to change this. You got to do that. And so hectic. it is not an easy thing to do. Like I had run into these couple problems like, Oh, it's clogging. It's, it's not, it needs to be cleaned. You have to empty this out. So yeah. So it starts doing the streaks and like, that's the printing head, you know, we're like, Oh great. Something's wrong with the printing head or with the needles or whatever it is. Like we're going through all this mm -hmm. process. They send us out a whole new printing head. They send us like whole new electrical components. They send us out all this stuff to fix stuff. They're like, oh yeah, it's messed up. It's it's broken, whatever it is. So they send us all these new parts. Now I'm doing surgery on a DTG machine to rehook all this <laughs> stuff up, reinsert needles. It's a month after buying a brand new machine. Like too. ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So the whole inside basically has to get rebuilt and redone and, and yada, yada, yada. And then I'm on the phone with them for hours trying to get it up and running. And like, while our printer, our printer's probably down for like a solid week, week and a half. And we just got orders stacking up. And I'm just like, dude, we got to start printing these. And like, we, we finally get it running again. And then there's just more problems and more problems. So then like, I get to this point where I'm like, dude, I can only print like five shirts. And then the whole machine has to be cleaned and emptied and recalibrated. So I'm like, print five shirts. I'm like, let's just shut down the website. Let's get through these shirts. We got to figure this out. We can't do this because at this point we're just wasting time. We are not being mm -hmm. like brain fart. Um, yeah. Well, we've built up like our, our quality, right? So the thing, the yeah. thing that like, like bothers me and Brad the most, and I think it bothers me just a little bit more than Brad is that like, you know, there, there's just like these small errors all the time on this stuff that we're like, you know, we're sticklers for our quality. Mm -hmm. You know, we bought this awesome, like Brad talked about, we haven't really gone into it, but we bought this amazing label printer yeah, go into it, go into and it. we had all these die cut labels. So we were taking the tags off of our shirts. We were printing tagless shirts on all of our stuff. And then on the back of our shirts, we had um, a light gray bona fide symbol. So we are custom tagging all of our shirts. Like everything yep. is like, you know, top notch quality. We don't want people to be uncomfortable at all. Um, this was before a lot of the shirt companies, like they did have the tearaway labels, but some of the sweatshirts and other things like that didn't have yeah. tearaways. I think most of them have really gone to the tearaway now where meaning tearaway, like you can just literally rip the tag out with, with your, with your fingers, yep. with not too much pressure. So we had everything down and then to come to see that these, pr this printer, like in our minds, we spent $30,000 on this. We thought it was going to make our life amazing. And now we spent $30,000 on this and it's making our life like a living, you know, crap box where yep. we're literally just taking our time that we felt like we could be doing other things. And now we have like at the same time, I think we also went through and we did like a design with Ryan, right? So we, we went and yeah. printed... I think um, I think we did a second round of the uh, pool side in shirts, right? Because they were really popular. Mm -hmm. And I think for Christmas, I think we did the the hoodies, and then we brought them back for the Smite launch tournament. Is that right? Yeah, something like that. So we have you know Ryan stuff coming in, perfect. We have this machine that is like causing us tremendous amount of issues, tons of waste, and now we're thinking like, what's the best thing that we can do in order to like make our business stay efficient, but not like piss off people. And like, you know, we were really small for trying to do something that was like 
in, in, you know, in actuality, like what people do to do this is like they're pretty big productions. Yeah, they have warehouses, they have teams, they have they design have teams, they have like cleaning 20 teams. Twenty of these printers, so if one goes down, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, they're they're insured, and we are not insured. And now we're like sitting here with a brand new business scheme, and we are like super frustrated, super frustrated. And Brad's spending out hours and hours on in work trying to get this thing to just print regularly. Like in our minds. If you go and print a piece of paper, like you don't need to calibrate the heads every single time you need to print a piece of paper. But every time we print a shirt, we're virtually having to calibrate this thing. It's like, yeah, what is going on? So I want to touch on the tag, the tag printer, because this machine is really cool. So it's like, literally the coolest thing I think we've ever bought. It, it, it is Not so, even joking. It is you. so cool. like I wanted to keep it. I mean, it's sitting in my garage. Is it? Yeah. We never did anything with it. It's still sitting here. Yeah, I might. <laughs> yeah that. yeah you guys you need to come get it um so it's it's this like little rubber stamp and coolest thing uh they laser engrave these plates so you have to like call the company to get these plates laser engraved and stuff to be able to use it so we get all the sizes and our back prints laser engraved on these plates and so this type of ink i'm more familiar with because it's literally like uh, making car uh I, I used to work at a body shop and so it's like mixing car ink for this ink because it's using um, thinners and stuff like that and all these chemicals. So it's really, really thin, like watered down ink that dries instantly. So it's got all this thinner in it and all this quick dry solution in it. And what you're doing is you're basically, you've got this bucket, this little round bucket full of some ink and this, and it basically stamps the plate and then it stamps the shirt and it stamps the plate and it stamps the shirt. And you've got this little foot pedal that you go like, psh, psh, and it goes like, psh, 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 and it's like stamping really fast. Like the, if you, if you look these up online, these people do like 10,000 like stamps in like an hour. It's insane. It goes so fast. <laughs> and like you can tie, you can set it on like an automatic timer to where like, it'll go like automatically. So like, you don't even have to use the foot pedal and it's just like, okay, it automatically stamps and stamps and stamps. And you just got to put the shirt in, put the shirt in, put the shirt in. And it's just like, stamp the plate, stamp the shirt, stamp the plate, stamp the shirt, stamp the plate, stamp the shirt. <laughs> and it's just like, it's so cool. And it's like, you know, you switch the plates out and you clean it. But then what we found out is like, because, and this probably has to do with the weather as well with like the humidity and stuff, it probably made it dry faster, but like that ink dries fast. And in that type of weather, it dries faster, even faster. And so like the plates would get clogged because it's like mm -hmm. this, like one millimeter, like engraved metal plate. And so like if the ink starts to dry in it, so it's like, we could only do so many shirts, then we had to make sure we cleaned it so that the ink wouldn't dry and ruin the plates because we actually had one of the plates get ruined right away and we had to get another one printed because we didn't understand this once again. Um, so, you yeah. know, we make mistakes. Um, <laughs> but so, I feel like there's also like, when you buy a machine that's like this pricey, like, I don't know if me <laughs> thinking of integrity, if I'm gonna buy something or I'm selling something <clears throat> and it requires some type of maintenance that's really important to the machine, mm -hmm. I'm gonna send an email or give them a call and just be like, hey, you may be new to this process, you know, super integrity out of business. I just wanna let you guys know that yep. this is a critical part of this. That's like going and buying a car and they never tell you that this car needs a, a, a more than normal oral change. Yeah. And so you just drive this car normally thinking you're going to go maybe 3,000 miles and it needs every thousand and all of a sudden 1,500 miles in your car breaks down. You're like, mm -hmm. what just happened? You know, like that's critical information. The same thing with the printer. It's like these people just expected us to know. Yeah without asking us about our business and being like, hey, have you guys used this before? You know, like you're about to spend a thousand dollars or two thousand or thirty thousand or whatever we spent on each of these machines. And they're like, all right, cool. Here you go. Bye. Yeah. They just don't care. They just want to get a sales. And then it's like the customer support's even worse, like trying to call them and get more stuff or get things fixed or anything like that. It's like the customer support, they just they try to put you off as much as possible. Um, and they just expect you to know everything and be able to do it yourself. So we've run into all of these, you know, ups and downs and issues. And now we're super frustrated with the, the big printer and we just basically go, dude, we got to get rid of it. We can't do this anymore. And we we're just like, okay, how are we going to do this? And then this is where the credit card thing and all of the paper trail come into place. And it's very important that whenever you do stuff, like you need to put it in writing, you need to put everything, having phone calls with people, like you need to be taking notes, sending an email afterwards and say like, here's what we talked about just to verify it all. 
and like just have as many paper trails as you possibly can uh, because there's a lot of situations in your life that they will come back and they will help you um, just to have clarity and stuff like that. And um, so like I had all my ticket, I had all the ticket numbers. I went through, gathered up all these emails and stuff like that. And I was like, dude, here's how many times I was on support with them. And here's how long I was on support with them. And I'm just like, this is crazy. So Billy goes to the credit card company and shuts it down. Yeah. So the process works that like we talked about, me and Brad finally decided like we've had absolutely enough. Like we don't want anything to do with this. We don't want to waste another shirt after our shirts are now over a hundred just wasted shirts, then wasted like the graphics printed wrong. So we can't, we literally can't even give these shirts away, which is like cringe worthy to us. Cause it's like, we spent money on this and we want to like, at least donate the shirts Mm -hmm. and we can't even donate the shirts. So now like we're literally having to throw shirts in the garbage, which is like not cool. Secondly, we just go after, we're like, we're done. We can't, we can't do this anymore. We don't have enough time. We don't want to do this. Like we realized how like incredibly time consuming this machine is on our business. Like anything you do in your business that just like completely distracts you from even anything creative and producing new, uh, new direction or whatever it is like, that's a no go, man. Like, we're trying to master something that we have no business trying to master because we don't want to be a DTG printing warehouse. Yeah. So we're done. So Brad tells me and I'm like, yep, I'm going to call the credit card company. And I just call both the credit card companies, which are super efficient. Well, man. Like, and first we asked the company if they would take it back. Yeah, we're like, we're like, point. can you yep. take it back? And, and sorry to interrupt. But we're like, hey, can you guys no, take go. this back? We're having all these issues. And they literally are like, Nope, it's past the warranty. It's it's like 90 days at this point. It was like right at that 90 day point. So it was like a hit or a miss. And, I, and we're basically like, dude, we've had so many issues. We've actually only been up and running and using this for like a period of five weeks out of the past three months. Like mm-hmm. we, there's problems and we have all the those tickets. So they say no. And we're like, okay, we're going to escalate it. And we told them on mm-hmm. the phone that we were going to escalate it. And I remember directly threatening them and telling them like we're going to escalate this and then billy took billy took it to the credit card company so how did how yeah. did that work no i do remember that because i think we were on the i don't know i don't remember what the guy's name is nor do i think we should even say it if i did remember <laughs> it but uh yeah i remember being on the phone and i like got like frustrated i was like dude like are you sure you want to do this and he's like we're not going to give you a refund and i was yeah. like okay so i i literally me and brad i think we were on a three-way call or i might have he might have just called me back hung up the phone, literally called my credit card company. I was like, hey, we bought this piece of equipment. I'm going to send you all the documentation whenever we get off this. But this piece of equipment is not only faulty, they're you know not being very uh, favorable in customer service. I would like to put a dispute on this charge. And so then I called my other credit card company. I think one had like 15,000 or 20,000. And then the other one was like 5,000 because we had to split it up because we didn't have a card quite big enough to fit all of it on one. So then I called the other one, I said the exact same thing. And I'm not even joking you, probably within 45 minutes, this guy calls me back and is like, what is going on? Because once you do, like I told you guys, this is the leverage that you have with your credit cards. You don't even understand how powerful this is. They take money immediately from that vendor's bank account because they they paid for it. And if I said, hey, this person potentially ripped me off or, and the way they do this and why they do this is because like, hey, you know, if somebody steals your credit card, like they don't want to lose money. Nobody wants to lose money here. So mm-hmm. they take the credit card money and they put it in like a holding account so that nobody can touch it. And so now what happens is we have is- the printers and we have the money. Yep. So now we are super leveraged because if yep. we don't want to cooperate with the, and that wasn't our intention at all, but I knew that if I could get this to happen, that we could make them move on taking this machine back because it's obviously, I think not only did we not understand completely what was going on, yeah. but we also, I believe had a faulty piece of equipment. Yeah. And, and so what happened was, is then they, what happens in this situation is right. The money is, is there it's in holding. And then we still have the piece of equipment and, and what happens is they have a certain amount of time to basically uh, dispute prove. the claim and prove that like we're wrong, right? And mm-hmm. I don't know what that window is. It was like 14 days maybe or something like that. Like it's not, mm-hmm. it's not, it wasn't a ton of time. Um, and so what happened was is we now have not heard from the printer. They're ignoring us. And it's getting to like the closer day of this dispute thing. And what happens is, is if they don't dispute it, 
we keep the equipment and we keep the money and they are just, they're out of luck. And if they dispute it and prove wrong, then it goes into their favor or they can, you know, negotiate with us and say, okay, you can have the money back. We'll take the printer and it's like a refund. Right. And so they literally waited until the, like the day before I remember it being like the day before. And they're like, okay, we'll take the printer back. And like, cause we do, we had, we had so much evidence, like the, the credit card company then sends them like all the evidence. And it's this whole like case. It's like going to court and proving you're innocent, literally. And Brad we're did like, an amazing job at compiling all this stuff. Like he literally had the paper trail and just gave me like, <laughs> dude, it was like pages. Oh my gosh, it was so much stuff. And Billy, Billy had no idea. Like Billy had never been on these technical calls, right? So he no. had no idea any of this. So he gets this paper trail, and he's just like, "This is what's happened." Like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and it's like, it's like all, it's like here's all the tickets, here's all the problems, and you can see like every single problem that has happened and how long. It's like this one issue took ten days you know, to resolve. And it took them four days to answer me the first time. It's like, Mm -hmm. so you can see how much downtime we had over these 90 days. And it's like, when you look at it, we had like three or four weeks of, of uptime in a three month period because of all the issues. So it's like, I I had this paper trail and I was just like, dude, I got it. And then we had all the messed up shirts. We had proof of like every single shirt. I had this whole pile Mm -hmm. of shirts. Like (laughs) we had it, we had it all, we had it all. And we're just like, throw it out there. We are not getting screwed over. This is not working. This is not meant to work. Um, and it ended up going in our favor. Like mm-hmm. he, you know, the company came back, they took the printer back because they probably can fix it and they can resell it and, you know, all that stuff. Um, but, you know, they don't want to lose a $30,000 sale or whatever. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it's unfortunate that that happened and and whatnot. And it, pro- it maybe it could have been solved differently. Like, there was never a, hey, we'll send you a new printer or we'll send a technician out. There was nothing. There's nothing like that. Like, there's no hands-on help. There's nothing. So, um, yeah, I mean, we ended up getting refunded and we basically just choked it up as, okay, that was the biggest learning lesson of our life. We ended mm-hmm. up breaking back even to where we are. We're not completely up, you know, the creek and have no idea what we're going to do because we have negative, 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 negative money now. Um, so it ended up working super in our favor, which we are very, very lucky that it did. Um, yes. and if you haven't learned something yet, we have hit a lot of speed bumps and a lot of luck along the roads mm-hmm. of, of this stuff. And some have been in the worst and some have been in the better, but like this one, luckily it was in our favor. We were on a mission though, that this was going to go in our favor. Like we were not, we were not having this because it was unusable at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, and there's just a lot of preparedness on like not even knowing that we're, you know, saving all our shirts, right? Like we just, we were just saving them. Like, I don't even know what we were doing. I think we were thinking of like, how do we, how do we donate these shirts? Right. So we just like say, happen to save all the shirts. Well, I remember saying too, like, what if we like print on the back of them and then we like cut it and make something cool out of it or something like that. Yeah. I was like, oh, we we could make make, like photos or a quilt or something like that. Like if we print it on the back of the shirts. (laughs) And so without knowing we were being prepared and stacking the odds in our favor. Um, I think Brad, were you consciously thinking of like recording these calls for a purpose or was it just kind of something that you were in habit to do? No, I mean, it's just, it was just complete habit. Well, like, and they recorded all on their technical side and stuff like that. And then I, I just was instantly sending emails and stuff because a lot of the times the calls would actually end in, I'll send you instructions in an email. I'll send you step by step, step stuff in an email. So then they would send me an email and say, here's the ticket. And then I would end up responding whether it was working or not working. So then you have this full Mm -hmm. chain on every single issue of Mm -hmm. here's when it started. Here's all the steps that were taken. Here's when it was resolved or not resolved. And it just Mm -hmm. happened to be that that's how it ended up working. Like it was, it was, it was just, it was luck. It was luck that it, it, it ended up working. Yeah. And so all that luck came into play where it's like, anytime you guys make a decision, and it's something big for your business and it could be something risky that you're investing in something you mm-hmm. might as well like have that paper trail you might as well have the evidence especially if it starts going haywire you know you just invested in a new online program it cost you two grand uh you're doing some type of funnel you don't know what's going on and yeah man just like 
Do it on a credit card. Don't pay cash for things. Keep yourself leveraged. Even if it's a home fix around your house, like I talked about, you know, my parents uh, were selling their house and they had a roofing guy come out. They paid him in cash and now they can't get him to come back to fix a couple of the issues that they looked over. So, you know, it's stuff like that all the time where it's like if you just even if it's like a couple percent loss of cash where it ends up being a couple hundred dollars like that, that's think of it as an insurance plan. Mm. You are buying an insurance plan to protect this $50,000 investment on your asset. It's worth the cash loss if there's a potential that something could go wrong. 100%. Yeah. And just always stay diligent and get the things that you want because we never gave up. I never looked at Brad like, oh, we lost 30 grand. Yeah. I was like, no, <laughs> I know we can back. get this money back. I know yeah. how to play these credit cards. We have been playing with credit cards for a long time yeah. now. So I know that I can get them to at least dispute the charge. I've seen it done on eBay. So in my mind, like all these things have been adding up and I'm like, you know, we can do this. It's going to happen. And so we leverage them. And once you leverage them, like Brad said, they don't want to lose everything. Like yep. if we win, I don't I mean, I don't even know what we would have done with the printer, but we have the money. I would so. have went and <laughs> thrown it off a building and watch it explode. <laughs> That's literally what we were talking about doing it. Like <laughs> we would renting a, a pickup video. truck, <laughs> <laughs> driving it to the edge of the cliff and throwing it off. But anyway, going into a business where you just don't know a ton about, just like do as much homework as possible. Like watch the YouTube videos, like maybe call one of these humongous warehouses and be like, Hey, how do you guys care for your machines? You know, like just ask yeah. questions. Cause that's some of the things that we could have probably done that we didn't do. And then even called our printers and just been like, Hey, do you know anything about these machines? It would just save us a lot of time knowing that like, Hey, you have to have this thing running. And we didn't, mm -hmm. we, I just found this out like a month ago. A month ago that you have to keep the machines like running. Four and this years is later, like five years what, later. Five years ago yeah. that we had this and nobody had any answer. I've never heard it from those people that sold us a machine or anything that was like, hey, you have to keep your machine running 24 seven because as soon as you stop, the ink starts getting clogged in the heads, which is what we are seeing. Yep. And now everything that that Ryan told us makes all the sense in the world. It's like we just didn't have it running enough and it would clog it. And once it clogs it every single time, it would start streaking the printing and it would start ruining our shirts. Yep. Super unfortunate. But what a lesson and what an experience. It was a lesson yeah. and an experience. It, and I would say kind of the last thing is treat it as like an internship. If you're going to go and do something, go and find somewhere that you can go and watch how it's done for a little bit of a period, no matter what, no matter what it is. Like mm -hmm. if you want to go and make a video game, go to our video game studios and talk to some of the people and see how they do it. Right. If we wanted to do this printing stuff when we screen printed and when we did the DTG through this whole process, we never have been to a screen printing facility. Let me tell you mm -hmm. that. So like, never, I still haven't. I still, I literally <laughs> I still I haven't. I've been I've been to one, but I, I haven't I didn't tour it, but I've seen it set up. I haven't seen the process. This is what Brad's talking about. Watch right, the process. Right, watch the process. Like if you went and you're just like, hey, can you got can I just spend the day here and can I just like shadow you and can you just like walk me through the stuff? Cause like I could tell you right now, if I saw how emotioning was done firsthand, if we saw how screen printing was done firsthand, if we saw how DT, we never would have done any of it. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I would have been like, this is insane. <laughs> But like, because we were so eager, we're just like, oh, we're just going to do it and figure it out. But if we would have just taken a step back and like actually looked at it, we would have just figured out a different way to accomplish the same goals. Um, mm -hmm. And it would have just been a little bit more slower. But in the end, it probably would have been more successful. Um, so definitely do that no matter what it is you're going to do. If you're going to start up any type of business, no matter what it is, right? You want to be a wedding planner? Go shadow a wedding planner and see mm -hmm. what they do. Go work for one for a little bit and actually understand what it takes because yeah. until you can do that, you're not going to know what it takes. Like I should have gone and just got a job at a screen printer for six months. Like that's literally what we should have done. And then I could have been like, Oh, I'm an expert at this. Now we can go and do it. But like, we just don't do any of that thing, those things. So like definitely like use internships, go and get jobs doing what you think you want to do. And yes, it might set your timeline back and not give you the immediate, you know, success, but like, in the long run, it's going to allow you to make more educated decisions to be successful. Absolutely. I think that's also can be extrapolated even to school. 
Like guys, mm -hmm. I think our country is super set up backwards in how we do college. You get into college immediately from high school, you repeat college for the first two years, and then you decide on your major at what? 20 years oh, old. We're doing a whole episode on college. Yeah. Let's do that next week. We'll, we'll go. We'll, we're going to go into college <laughs> I'm next totally week. Totally down for that. But think about it. Like you should, and I usually don't say the word should because that implies if you don't do it, it's a bad decision. But I, in this, I truly believe it's probably a bad decision, even though it can work out. But why go through life blind? Take your time, as Brad says. Go into these places, study what you want. And then if you don't like, or you say you still like Brad, wedding planner. You go in, you get a job as a wedding planner. You like this, you like this, you don't like this, you don't like this. Figure out how to outsource that behavior mm -hmm. or that task to somebody that really likes it. Like that's what we ended up learning here. It's just like outsource the things that we don't know or we don't care to master because there are masters out there that are gonna do things amazing. And you know, the amount of time it would have took me and Brad to master screen printing was like stupid for our business. Yeah absolutely stupid. We were not trying to be a screen printer. There are people that do this 24 seven, 365 for the last 25 years. They know exactly what they're doing. Yep. We are trying to be a clothing marketer and distributor for people that don't know anything about the industry. Right. Mm -hmm. So like we learned everything about the industry, about manufacturers, how to do that whole process. That's what we were good at. That's what we mastered. Um, at least we were knowledgeable enough not to try to make custom hats. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine, dude, if we oh bought God. an embroidery machine and after one, I we kick it to the curb because we're like, this is garbage. <laughs> this is not happening. Um, yeah, buy a $15,000 and then realize that the, the real machines that we want are like 150000 yeah. per machine. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, that's, that's kind of why we never got one of the dryers, right? Like the dryers and screen printers are these big conveyor belts and we're sitting here drying stuff with a heat dry hand heat dryer. Like that shouldn't be drying shirts. That shouldn't like, be drying from shirts. Best Buy. What does it dry? Like caulking and paint? Yeah. Like you're or to melt like plastic <laughs> and stuff like that. Like it is not meant to dry ink on shirts. It's going to start the shirt on fire. Like, like literally if we didn't, we've had to figure out the amount of distance <laughs> that we had to hold it beyond the shirt because yeah, if we it put it too it. close, like it was like a, a balance of like, it's mm -hmm. too far. It won't dry it fast enough. It's too close. It's literally burning brown holes. Yeah. In our yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I remember some of this. We're like, oh, we messed this one up. I guess this is our sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> we burned a hole in it. Well, I guess that's our, uh, our garbage sweatshirt. Yeah. That's going to be the sleeping. That's going to be the shirt that we use to print our ink in the future. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's kind of our experience with DTG printing next week. We'll go into actually college and school. I like that idea because I think we both have strong opinions on that and kind of how it sets you mm -hmm. up for failure future as well. uh, failure or success. Success. On I was like, do. I was like, wait, yeah. what is what? I was like, what word am I missing right here? What is the word? It's success, yeah. failure or success, depending on how you go about it. So, uh, um, absolutely. Thanks everybody for watching. Sticking with us. Hope you like it. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys out on the next video. Peace.